All right. So I'm going to let everyone finish logging in real quick as we're getting things started. And I'm going to do a couple of housekeeping items. Um, so first and foremost, welcome back. My name is Alex Danners. I will be your guest host today. Looking forward to being with everyone and uh, very excited to be here with Frank Raymondi, who is an awesome channel background I'm looking forward to talking about today uh, and a little bit about what you guys are working on. I've uh, been seeing your team all over the place, which has been fun. Yeah. So um, a couple quick housekeeping items and I'm going to jump over, let Frank uh, do his thing, introduce himself and we'll jump into everything. So first and foremost, um, everything's held on Zoom. I know you're probably seeing this across multiple platforms. We broadcast on all different social media. So if you're seeing us on there, feel free to jump into the Zoom. Uh, link is available generally on all of those posts as well as mspinitiative.com. Um, Always the easiest way to get your questions answered, uh, but we will try and keep track on the different social media channels. Other thing I always like to touch on when we come into these is uh, the two seconds about us. So MSP Initiative, if this is your first one jumping in, um, our focus is education, education, networking, driving the community forward. Um, networking is a big piece of what we do, and that comes with events. So a couple of events that we're doing, I know we've, we teamed up with Frank and his team before. Um, I just want to quickly share my screen here. I'm going to show you um, the MSP Initiative website. If you head over to Community Minds, it's going to be the next um, main event that we're doing. Uh, so this is a two-day educational seminar. Uh, idea was bringing in some great, you know, brilliant people like Frank that have a good background that can come in on an area and really teach us uh, how to push the business forward, whether it's sales, marketing, leadership, um, legal. Uh, we've kind of touched it all. Financial. So we've got some great sponsors on there, some really good educators. We just uh, finalized, I think, our last workshop, so we are good to go. Um, free two days. We're going to do Nashville, and then just after that, we're going to do Denver in July. So great time of year to be in those places. Uh, should be a lot of fun. This will be our second year doing it. Um, and then the other one that I know I've teamed up with Frank before on is our community block party. So no shortage of those this year. Um, first one coming up is going to be actually our Dallas event. So we're going to be teaming up with the team over at uh, Enable for their power event. Um, we're going to be at DataCon Europe, uh, ConnectWise IT Nation Australia, DataCon in Miami, DataCon in Australia, and ConnectWise IT Nation in uh, Orlando, Florida. So well, no know. shortage of places this year. <laughs> So with that, I am going to push things over to you. Frank, you want to give a quick intro? Tell us what uh, Nowhere is doing. Yeah, great. Thanks. Thanks, Alec. And uh, thanks to MSP Initiative. You guys are clearly doing a lot of valuable stuff. I, you know, it, it's it's great to see kind of the the community uh, development that you do. In addition, you know, we're, we're all in this to make money, right? We're all trying to do, we have, there's always some, you know, sideline version of, of what we're doing, but uh, you know, th this is this is important. You know, I think the networking piece is always the huge piece that um, kind of gets understated a lot, and and uh, but it's a uh, huge value. So we thank you from the industry standpoint of what you guys do and drive the Thanks, drive Frank. that kind of effort. Um, so again, Frank Romandi, I'm the VP for Channel Alliances and Partnerships for IGI. Um, IGI Infinite Group is a uh, Sort of a, a whole, not a holding company. It's a, it's a public company, over the counter traded. We have multiple elements of our business. Uh, we have two that are particularly interesting for MSPs. Um, one is Nodeware, which is in my shirt or somewhere, um, which is a continuous vulnerability management program, uh, and we'll, we can talk about a little bit about that. But it really kind of is a forms a fundamental basis of cyber hygiene and compliance and insurance requirements. And helps helps an MSP really protect their partner, their their customers from um, from vulnerable systems, vulnerable any IP address on the network. The other side of our business uh, is a services side of business, which we we do penetration tests and some other services around that. That I think, and Alec, we're going to get into it from a discussion in terms of the differences there and why an MSP needs to know about the difference and when they need what. Um, but that's a you know a, a hugely valuable element. Um, actually, there was just some news about a big company that does uh, some some um, tracking of businesses and they were hacked, right, on a, on a basic vulnerability, right? So even even the best, I won't say us, but the best, <laughs> the best of the breed, right, in terms of cyber delivery and cyber services 
is getting hacked and can get hacked. And so, um, but, you know, our, our focus is really being a proactive partner and a proactive provider of, of data that uh, is actionable and is, you know, deliverable for an MSP to minimize the risk for their partners. So uh, as you can tell by the color and the quantity of hair, I've been around a long time uh, in the channel. I've got some background with uh, way back when with Apple Computer back in the 80s and 90s, and then with Intel for uh, quite a long period, over 20 years uh, at Intel, working in uh, alliances in the channel and building uh, kind of with a real sort of philosophy around, you know, I guess partly kind of takes the village, but really kind of the one plus one needs to equal three, right? I, I love doing alliances and partnerships and sort of figuring out how, you know, this component when it's matched with this component and it's integrated in to make this thing over here easier that the MSP really needs to participate in. And that's, that's gold, right? And I love, I love putting those kinds of pieces together. So. Absolutely. That's no, me. I mean, and, and, you know, and I love it. I'll touch on a couple of things there that, um, that, you know, I think echoed through to us. I mean, first of all, thank you for the compliment on, uh, you know, our community side of things. I think the philosophy that George and I really kind of connected on and, and you know, really kind of springboard to be more, but also was the baseline of MSP initiative was, you know, rising tide raises all ships, right? The idea that if our partners are doing well, then yes, we are making money, which is great. That's obviously the end goal uh, that, 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 you know, we make money, but it's, it's nice that it's not just a, I sold someone a product and you know, best of luck to you. It's, I sold someone a product, they, they profited on it. Their business is more secure with it. I mean, that, that's really, to me, the magic of the channel. Um, and, you know, that's where, I think the other side of it, the uh, the networking communication side, um, you know, people just kind of the handshake, uh, you know, being in the business, you've seen it. Um, I think COVID really showed us just how important that was. Yeah. Um, and and uh, you know, there's been some really good, you know, CompTIA does an awesome job at highlighting this, just that hallway chat and what that means. And some of the MSPs will tell me, oh, I go to this event. I don't really even go to sessions. I jump, I'm just there to connect with other MSPs. And yeah. you know, for them, it's, well, you know, well, it's funny, we, 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 we're, we're looking at, you know, the events that we participate in this year and, and, you know, just, you know, being smart on money and sort of ROI and looking at the whole things, right? We're, we, we, you know, there's a few events we're not going to do, but we'll probably still attend for that networking piece, right? Or just, you know, hang in the halls and, you know, talk to our alliance and our integration partners and, you know, hang out in their booth for a little while, right? You know, there's, there's different ways to, to get, to, to make an event productive. Um, and you know, there is, as we know, as you guys clearly know, right? There are a lot of events out there, um, and so it, there's a, you know, there's there's different ways to approach it, and so we're look we're we're kind of mixing it up a little bit this year to see what what makes sense and how to best meet MSPs and and our other partners. Yeah, I I, I heard an interesting stat last year that there's now more events than there are days in the year, um, just in the channel. Oh, oh my. God. <laughs> Um, if you talk to the folks over at, um, there's a couple of the, the bigger ones that are just kind of going to everything, right? Um, they've told me that they're at 330, 340 events a year, which I just, I look at our, our, our schedule. I mean, we will do anywhere between 50 and 70 a year and it's exhausting. Um, yeah, so uh, I can't imagine. It. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a great, you know, and it's funny. I think there was kind of the, you know, there was the post COVID Oh, I gotta get out of my house. I gotta get out of my house. I, you yeah. know, people were going every week, and then it was like, well, okay, now it's kind of good. I, so this year will be the interesting year, kind of the, I think the sort of the the the, the balance will be a little bit better, hopefully. Um, I agree, and we've seen a rise of smaller events, which um, you know I don't think is bad. I think we've also, I think we're also starting to see a consolidation of the larger events, which is good um, in terms of where the audience is going. And I think that's, you know, all that's a good thing for, for all of us. You know, I think that there's a lot of good education out there. And I think that, um, you know, the MSPs are, are, are willing and hungry to, to, to provide the, the feedback. I mean, when we did our event last year with Community Minds, we said, what's most important to you? And we got a ton of good feedback about what sessions would be best for them and what sessions they really liked. And they'd like to see them come back and maybe talk on a different topic and which sessions, you know, maybe they liked, but would love to see that person on it different topic or maybe in a panel set up. So a lot of good feedback. And you know, I think if you're listening and you've got your ear to the ground on it, you can definitely create a very successful event um, with the, you know, the education topics that the MSPs are looking for that are going to help them. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. 
So uh, threat detection, what a field to be in right now. Uh, <laughs> insane. Um, and pen but, testing, you know, I mean. It's, it's, it's an interesting, so, I, I mean, there's lots of interest here in, in, in a good way and a bad way, right? I mean, we're, we're, you're still seeing the thing. The, the, the biggest change that we've seen, you know, people, MSBs have known what vulnerability assessments are, right? Or they've known a vulnerability mm -hmm. management to a certain degree, or maybe they've heard about a pen test or they, you know, their customers required one and it needed to be totally third party, just, you know, uh, out, you know, the, the fox outside of the hen house kind of uh, mentality. Um, but in the last year we saw, you know, at shows and at, you know, demos that we've done and people sort of looking into this, they're really sort of the, the requirements um, coming around, whether it's compliance and, and or specifically cyber insurance. And those two, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're unique, but they're very close together. They're very tied together. They're, 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 they're each serving the other's purpose in, in many cases. Um, sure. So, so where, whereas two years ago, we'd say, you know, we're no where we're vulnerability management. They go, oh yeah, I've heard of that. I, I don't, you know, I don't need that. I, I, I do an assessment once a year and I'm good, you know, check the box. And um, that in the last six to 12 months has just changed dramatically. Where now we have, you know, people coming to us on a, on a web search, right? And looking for vulnerability management and say, oh, you know, I'd like a demo. I need this, I need, you know, I'm, I'm needing this. And so the 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 difference in our our differentiator, just to throw a little bit of a plug in, is that we're doing it continuously and proactively, right? You know, I don't have to think about when was the last test done, or when was the last scan done of your network. We're also looking at you know the complete network, right? Not just what's physically in in the four walls of an office. Um, we're not just looking at systems and. Um, and servers, right? We're looking at any any IP address, right? Because it, it literally any any IP address is is a, is a hackable surface, right? There are tools out there. There's these you know modern mafias, right? That are figuring out how to get into businesses and um, build you know find the loophole on the printer, right? That open port on the printer that you know was yeah who you know it's a printer. So you know we have we we you know we we recommend and, and provide ways for people to if if somebody brings in their own printer right the, the lawyer in the in the corner office sides you know he I'm just gonna I need my own printer for my own stuff plugs it into the network or connects it to the Wi-Fi you know ding 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 right that's trouble right because that yeah, device is now discoverable it's got open ports and when somebody's in they they can they they can play around so we're really looking at again, proactively, how to know what's in your environment, um, look for things that are uh, exploitable, right, or vulnerable, and yep. look for how to, to fix them. So we actually provide a recipe or, you know, re remediation steps of what you need to do, what the MSP needs to do. Um, by the end of this quarter, we're launching a new feature in the product, which will enable a um, an MSP to basically hit patch, right? Do the remediation, do the patch from within the tool. Um, That's great. So that'll make it even easier for an MSP to be proactive and really drive uh, cleanups before they have to do it. Because the, and, and it's interesting, and you, maybe you, from your side, you know, we hear um, a lot of MSPs feedback saying, you know, I, I love the product, it's working great. You know, it's found these things I have to do and I'm gonna go do them and great. But I'm afraid, not afraid, it's not the right word, but they're they're hesitant to roll it out to more customers because it's going to give them more work to do. So we're we're trying to break through that mentality of yeah. Okay, if you know it, it's just sort of you got you gotta you gotta break it, right? You gotta prioritize, right? You are gonna get a long list of things that need to be done because you just found a bunch of stuff that was vulnerable. So yeah, you you're the you're the provider, right? You're the outsourced IT. They're expecting you to be more proactive and more uh, deliverables uh, that that protecting them. It's tough. Um, you know, it's a little bit of chicken and the egg, I think, on a lot of the MSP business with, you know, we want, we want more business, we want to make more money, but we also are not sure when to hire, when to scale. Um, and, and beyond that, even if you are ready and you know how, and you're ready and you have the job description, scaling right now is very tough. I mean, we have way more open jobs than we do people. Um, which is crazy because there is a, you know, decently open job market. Um, but there is a lot of, 
Um, I think struggled to find people. I think COVID also flipped things up, you know, upside down a little bit. Some people are like, I'm not returning to an office. I'm going to work remote for the rest of my life. Um, so you're getting a little bit of that. And uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've worked with Comte on it for years. Um, you know, we used to do Future Leaders by T, which was a lot of education downstream. And they have some other great organizations they work with around um, really educating the next generation on, yeah, hey, I know you have this stereotype idea of what working in IT is, but it's also sales and marketing and finance and, you know, many other areas that don't require you to be a computer coder. Um, you know, and I, and I hope to see some of those organizations continue and be, you know, more invested in and um, because the reality is we need that. You know, it's just, it's not easy. If you talk to any recruiting yeah. firms, it's not getting any easier. No, no, absolutely. No, it's 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 a big, you know, it's a big <laughs> crisis. And, and yeah, it, 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 but it, but it's you know, you're in the business, you got to keep fighting for it, right? And you got to keep developing. And you know, we're we're hoping that you know our new features will will make it a little bit easier. But um, you know, it, it, you know, Matt. Uh, Koenig, my colleague, um, has written a couple of articles and blogs about, um, you know, ignorance is not an is not a defense, right? And you know, even if you find some things that need to be done, and you're you, you, as long as you got a plan, right? Your your defense at a minimum is a plan to execute, mm -hmm. right? And yep. you you have set your high priorities, you set your medium priorities, and you set the things that you're doing on a Saturday afternoon when you're just you're bored stiff and you want to do something, right? Without having to yeah. think too hard. So you, you have to kind of build that that scenario of, of uh, development and you know customer deliverables. Um, so um, yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's a it's a scary site, but if but if you do it in chunks, right, you sort of prioritize and build some some models. I think it, it's very doable, right? And you know, MSP should not be afraid to 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 find out what their environments are like at their customers because bad guys are going to find it and before you then if you if you wait too long and then you'll be out of that customer or you'll be out of business because you, you, you yeah know. i mean the reality is we, we've, we've all seen it you know we talked about it in the show before compliance is coming uh you know unfortunately that train has left the station it, it is on its way um it's going to be you know, things that would have been kind of like, ah, oh, you know, what happens are, are going to be a lot less, uh, you know, in that category of going forward. I think it's going to be more and more at the responsibility, um, you know, the MSP. And, and it's not that it's not pointed at them today, but I think it's going to be, they're going to be held a little more liable to it in the future. And, you know, I think things like that are just, you know, yes, more work can be tough. And sometimes you got to just lay it all out and say, okay, I'm going to complete how, you know, whatever it is, one of these a, a day or one of these a week. Um, but I mean, that versus the other side of it, which is, oh, my customer got hacked because of vulnerability that I left open that I could have scanned for and didn't. And now I am sitting here with a lawsuit on my desk because that client was a lawyer or a doctor's office or one of the other many businesses that we all know MSPs are securing. And yeah. I mean, it's, you know, that, I think insurance you touched on it earlier that really turned some of that liability and thought process upside down over the last couple of years we saw it come in and uh it was really really heavy into control for a second right whereas you can't use half these tools and then they eased up a little bit when they started to talk to some of the tools in our sandwich you know i don't think that was the right step i don't think they should have come in and you know start shutting down businesses essentially but um you know i'm happy that they actually opened doors and like talked to data for instance and you know ease things a bit um but you know i do think that that's not unlikely to happen again. Um, oh no! I mean, you know, I mean, again, there's there's plenty of history in in the insurance business driving standards, right, and driving guidelines, and you know, of course, one that's brought up all the time is seatbelts, right? You know, thirty years yep. ago, seatbelts were a, they were in the car, but when the insurance companies saw that when people were in seatbelts, they get less injured. Less injured means less payouts. So let's <clears throat> let's mandate that. So I mean, it's same things happening here, right? We're, oh yeah. We're, more airbags means less payout. So install yeah. airbags everywhere. Yep. No, it's it's you know, it, 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 you know whoever whoever designed the insurance industry is it was is brilliant. <laughs> I love their guts almost guaranteed profit, right? It's just <laughs> until they get catastrophic, yeah. but that happens once a year and then they readjust and they they back to making money again. Yeah. And then you're paying everyone, no matter what your rate is and <laughs> no matter what your history is, you're paying a hundred something a month. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah, no, it's um, 
I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I'm uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do from a, um, you know, I think that I do like seeing some of the insurance companies getting down into our, our actual field and not just the big enterprise style companies that are kind of sticking their tentacles down. Um, it's good to see some people on the ground that are actually working in the space. And I yeah. think oh, that, we, that we've actually, yeah, we've got a partnership with data stream insurance. As oh, perfect. Time. Yeah. Right. And they, you know, they're, we're working on ways for the data that we provide to more easily become part of the application that the end user and or the MSP is providing as part of the, you know, part of the final application that the carriers get. So, um, you know, that, that's a, that's a, that's a huge value add. And, you know, again, they're, they're making it easy for an MSP just not to hand it off to their insurance, you know, the company end users insurance broker, but get, get more involved. There's not a ton of money on it per se, but it's but it is a stickiness element, right? Um, just providing more yep. value to the customers. No, absolutely. And I mean, it, I think it's just so important to look at those kind of partnerships and them actually working with the tools of the channel because I just feel like that's going to make lives of everyone easier. Um, you know, if an MSP is doing the right things and they are checking all the boxes and not just the you know annual. You know, checkbox, but like continue, you know, continuous monitoring. Yep. All that is just crucial to make sure that, I mean, I, I heard a story years ago it was um, somebody at the university of, uh, of Austin and, uh, or uh, UT Texas. And they, um, they essentially were the IT guy. They saw a massive spike in network and they said, well, what the hell's going on here? And they went all over looking for it. And one of the teachers had gone on a uh, sabbatical program over to China and come back with what looked very similar to a Furby, but with a screen in its stomach. And they were playing their Spotify off of it. And the Furby would sing to them. Huh. Huh. And uh, all it was doing was, as soon as it was plugged into the network, so that they could, of course, stream their Spotify, it was shooting everything to a server back in China and then back to them. <laughs> um, oh. So quickly went in, you know, shut that thing down. But, um, you know, obviously it's already done. Um, you know, that kind of stuff is just, it's not uncommon, you know, and you see all the, like you're now, you're now seeing a lot of warnings, but there wasn't warnings for the last five, six years they've been available for the the cheaper Wi-Fi light switches that are on Amazon and, you know, eBay and all those. It's, yeah, it's convenient and it's nice that it's cheap, but is it worth what you're realistically doing to your environment? Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, one of the things um, we kind of, mentioned before that I think kind of related to this and kind of in support of compliance requirements or insurance that, that we've, we've been kind of preaching a lot. We've done some webinars on and partnering with, with um, kind of this four-legged stool around cyber hygiene, right? Is, 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 mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 these are all sort of elements that are being, are kind of driving, driving proactivity at the customer level, right? At the individual yeah. user, right? So the, the four things that we really promote and um, I, I'm just gonna put it out here. We don't need to go too deep in it, but right, security awareness training, right? That we, we've seen whatever the stats are 80 to 90% of all hits are, you know, user employee doing something wrong they shouldn't have or clicked on or whatever. So that that's, you know, keeping the employees well-educated and, and uh, trained. Um, MFA, right, is is another key element, right? If you're not, um, you know, doing that extra check, and, and I know everybody hates it, right? The executives want to just scream at the IT shop or, oh, I don't want to have to do that again. I go look over here, take me another 10 seconds. I don't have those 10, you know, it's like, get over it, dude. If you want to have your business survive and have your bank account survive, just suck it up, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, the, the third piece that we, that I think is a very valuable piece is email security, right? Just basic, whether it's VAID or, um, uh, you know, in any of these, so there's mail protector, right? There's a whole bunch of providers in that space. Um, I think that's a, that's a huge third category. And then, you know, I've inserted ourselves in there from vulnerability management, right? Such as Nodeware that will, again, proactively look on a daily basis, every asset, rescan for things that are, you know, Microsoft, Cisco, you name it, people are publishing vulnerabilities and they're, they're the CVEs on a daily basis. And if you're looking once a week, once a month, once a quarter, why even bother at that point, right? You're gonna have so many that you can't, kind of back to that point about that workload, right? If you if you do that once a month, you're gonna have a, a huge list of things to do, whereas opposed to you kind of doing it regularly, checking for the most criticals, 
you know, et cetera. So those four pieces really are um, what, you know, again, in talking with insurance companies, compliance, you ask anybody around the world, all their guidelines really are carrying those four elements, right? Those are mm -hmm. the base level, right? You can add firewalls, you can add um, uh, SIM, you can add all the different tools, but there tend to be more pro uh, reactive in how they operate, right? Oh, we found an issue here, let's go fix it, right? As opposed to, or, you know, somebody broke in here, uh, let's go to it. So these four are kind of from the employee, from the MSP, from the IT department, Right, they're looking at ways that can, you know, be, you know, he keep saying, but proactive, right, on on the environment, right. What are the risks? Where where do they sit? How do I make sure that that uh, phishing email doesn't get through? How do I make sure that that um, that printer's vulnerability with an open port isn't exploited? Right. So you got to mm -hmm. you got to you got to be looking for those things, and the more consistently you're doing it, the easier it gets over time because you're addressing them as they come, as opposed to having a big long list of things to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's funny you touch on that because I feel like it's been such a talk track of my life recently. Um, you know, those, those kind of key pillars. And, you know, one of the things that really, I think struck home for us on the phone side of things, we deal so much with, you know, the phone teams, the, the sport teams um, was the MGM hack. And, and obviously the headache that that caused Las Vegas last year. Um, yeah. And the fact that that was somebody just calling in and saying, oh, yeah, no, 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 I, I work there. I'm blah, blah, blah. Uh, I, I'm John Smith, and uh, I just need you to do this. Okay, no problem. It was unbelievable because, I mean, we've all seen and heard about, you know, IT security in Vegas. It's unbelievable. They have armies yeah. of people around yeah. those casinos. Um, you know, we actually have uh, developed an MFA uh, of sorts around uh, the phone. Oh. Yeah, to really, uh, to really counteract that. And it's uh, it's been really nice to see, and our partners have been great with rolling it out. Um, but I mean, yeah, you know, we, George and I kind of joked the other day that we could see that feature becoming kind of a compliant. You have to have it, um, you know, going forward. Um, you know, I'm sure we'll see a lot of phone providers follow suit. But it's um, you know, it, it's interesting to watch just how quickly and how you know major events happen the day to day can really just adjust even like our roadmap, right? We saw that and we said, ooh, yeah, that we could see that happening. And same thing with back when phone spooking would happen and people would, you know, rack up your uh, your SIP trunk or Delta. It, it, it's, you know, everyone has to respond in different ways. And, and it's nice to watch, you know, companies like Nodeware pop up and really aggressively go after that to, to help these MSPs kind of stay in line and, and, and move things forward because, you know, nobody wants to be <laughs> the next big hack. I and mean, we all saw yesterday yeah. there was, Pretty major remote tool that uh, you know had a pretty pretty big patch and people were great about disseminating that. But I mean, having a tool that just pops up and says, "Hey, you're gonna need to patch this," yeah. um, definitely be nice. Yeah, no, exactly. Well, that kind of leads to uh, we, you know we kind of mentioned the, the the from an educational standpoint. What I wanted to sort of just call out the differences between vulnerability assessments, yeah. vulnerability management, and penetration tests. Um, since our company kind of does does all three of those, we're pretty pretty well well versed in the in the distinctions. And so, you know, a vulnerability assessment right is a one time it's it it's an internal look at what is what the environment is like, right? The quantity of mm -hmm. the systems, what kind of vulnerabilities are quickly found, and and uh, it, it, it it in in past days it was a checklist, right? It was something that had to be done once a year, but it was just a simple assessment, right? It wasn't really an ongoing program. So that's that can still be done and Nodeware can do that on a one-time basis if you need to produce a report or you need to provide something. But the trick is really kind of bringing that into a management, right? A continuous re-looking at that and kind of continuously looking for new things. Somebody brings in a, you know, a BYOD device and plugs it in. You want to be able to know about that, right? You want to know as things come along, you want to be able to provide the recipes, right? The, 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 the ways to fix those things. And so that's, that kind of takes it to the vulnerability management and that can be integrated in. We've got some great integrations like with VSAO toolbox and compliance mm -hmm. scorecard and, and others that are taking the data to, to do other things with it. But it, again, at a, at, a, at a baseline, the vulnerability management is, is its own tool. Now the distinction then um, a lot of MSPs are starting again, whether it's compliance or insurance, or just, it's been a sort of a, a longer term program is a penetration test, right? A pen test. Pen tests are, I mean, they're, they are an authorized break-in, 
right? E effectively, right? The the end user has to sort of know that it's going to be coming. The partner, the MSP, is coordinating it, and then a third party organization is using their tools, using their uh, their skills, and their you know ethical hackers trying to break in and find ways to that that things could be exploited. And sometimes that's a physical, you know, the card key entry way, right? Or where those connections go. Um, but it's really sort of looking at at the paths and, and the ways in and and those produce a report, right? And so um, that report outlines what needs to be done. And again, back to this this workload, I mean, you can find a lot of stuff that needs to be done on those penetration tests. And so they're not typically done more than twice a year at the most. Sometimes they're doing done um, quarterly, depending on the industry and the and the company. But you know, minimally annual is the right way to do it. But they really do yep. need to be done by a third party, totally independent, away from the MSP, right? The MSP can't be checking their own work. They can't, and often they aren't going to have the skills to sort of do that type of penetration. So there's a there's a almost a yin and a yang, right, between the ongoing support and what we're you know proposing and suggesting is that you use vulnerability management to prepare for a pen test. Right. And, and both yep. physically and, and sort of mentally, right? You, you, you attack the things, you, you, you approach the things internally that you can find, you, 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 you fix them, you patch them, you remediate, you do your, your, you're looking for things regularly. And then when that pen test comes up in three months or whenever it is that you're, you're improving your odds that penetration test is going to show you as an MSP, a higher value to your partner because that the penetration test couldn't get in, or they only found a couple of things. So your customer is going to know that you're doing the right thing for them on an ongoing basis, proven by this third-party external entity saying, yes, this penetration test we're able to get here, but it was stopped by this tool, right? We couldn't get past yeah. that. If you know, that's the right way to do it. So um, yeah, we we you know we're 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 we've got a you know a, a, an entry level, if you will, pen test that partners can. Can uh, can acquire and and it's a baseline uh, penetration test, pretty very very cost effective way to to get it started. So um, you know there's there's um, great comp you know again that confluence is not the right area. I'm, I'm just coming off vacation off a long trip that my brain's still not fully thinking here yet. No um, worries. But, but there is a way to. You know, again, to, to provide both sides of that uh, and and increase the value to your customers. Um, so we get no, to make that distinction. So uh, one of the things I always like to ask in these, and I think you dropped some really good pieces of information and really good nuggets for the MSPs that are listening. Um, one thing I would ask is, you know, you talked about not checking your own work. Um, you, know, you talked about the continuous management, not the you know end of the year checkbox. Yeah. What is the, I would, you know, if you had to label kind of the number one thing you're seeing MSPs mess up in this field, um, what's the biggest piece of advice you can give out to them? And what would be, you know, the one thing that they should kind of pay attention to that they are most likely, uh, you know, misstepping today? Well, I guess um, it's identification, right? One of the, one of the things that when, when a customer, when an MSP rolls out, Nodeware, whether it's just internal and a proof of concept or whether it's to their first customers or two. The one thing that's always surprising to them is the number of systems, the number of devices they actually found on that network. Right. I mean, they could be managing all day long. They could be using the great RMM tools, great managed tools, but invariably, by, maybe it's not 100% of the time, but it's well north of 90% of the time that the MSP and the end user, oh, I forgot about those systems. Right. I forgot about that. So think about, you know, if you're forgetting about those systems, right, and those systems are getting, maybe it hasn't been updated and patched in a couple of years, right? Or mm -hmm. maybe it's just something that doesn't get patched because it's, you know, it's nah, it's just a VoIP phone, right? You know, well, sure. anything and everything these days is penetratable by, or has, has some known vulnerabilities. So I guess the, the, the main thing I would say is that don't, you're never going to have enough information that um, that's going to really protect your customers. And so, you know, it's it part, you know, kind of back to the cyber hygiene thing, right? It's, it's, it, you got to start the basic blocking and tackling uh, tools, right? You got to know what your environment is like, right? How many are on there? 
how risky is it? You know, we, we provide a score, a zero to 999 score that, you know, starts at the individual asset up to the, you know, the, the total uh, score for your customer. Um, you know, so you can you can quickly look and say, yeah, okay, they're doing okay. I this was a priority today. So it, you know, prioritization is key, but but you can't you can't not know. Yep. Right. And so there's there's a number of tools. There's our tool. There's you know network um, network management tools like a um, uh, you know Avic and and uh, mm -hmm. you know, others that are that are that are identifying network management tools. But you know, so you you got to start. You got to start somewhere, and um, you know, I, 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 that, and again, it's just it's it's it can be daunting, right? It can be a lot of work, whether it's a resource, oh, yeah. but if you're not doing it, you're not doing your customer well, um, well by them, and you're not doing yourself any favors. I think I feel like you're just kind of teeing yourself up for you know a, a harsh uh, you know future. It's no different than. Uh, you know, our, our, our old MSP that we had, um, had a, a tough customer out of, uh, Southern New Jersey. It was a, I think it was a doctor's office or, uh, a dental office. And they were just really tough in terms of HIPAA compliance. They were way out of it. Uh, oh, we gave okay. the list on, here's how to get into it. And they're like, nah, we're, we're too small. No, nobody's ever going to go look at us. And the reality is the worse that that those attacks get, the more common they get, you know, it goes downstream, um, and the compliance will come or the criminals will come. I mean, it's going to go one of two ways. Um, you know, I think it's no different here. Um, yeah. You know, people so need the, to... The other, the, other thing that, the other thing to sort of think in that in that realm is, right, it's not just you know, the dentist's office, right? It's not just mm -hmm. their their office, right? But there's a supply chain that they're connected to, right? So, yeah. you know, the, the you know whether it's storage or, you know, I, I always bring up, um, you know, SaaS applications, right? There's... Mm -hmm. the, SAS Leo now part of Avic, right? Uh, John Harden and team and what they've done with, you know, the SAS management tools. You know, there there are so many different things that that are ways in that if you're not again if you're not monitoring if you're not keeping attention to then um, it's 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 a scary world. Um, it's you can, you can help. Right? There there are steps to take. No, I agree, and it, it, it's it's cool to see because I remember when Avic popped up and it was like monitor my network. Why would, I, you know, why would I need to do that? It's amazing to see the educational curve of, of what's happened right now that that's, you know, pen testing, all of it, it. That was such an enterprise thing. And now to see it so, uh, you know, readily available. If I rewind the clock five, 10 years, I didn't see any pen test. Um, and now I mean, you're at every other show that I'm at. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and again, you know, you know, in, in a, a comprehensive big environment, yeah, pen tests can be thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars and more, right? I mean, they, they can mm -hmm. be a lot of money. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we we've, we've done with this entry level. It's a thirty five hundred dollar list price for five externals and two hundred fifty internal, you know, scanned on a baseline test, right? So, you know, mo most businesses, if if they're serious about their what they're doing, then you know that that's a good approach and a good, you know commitment and, and confirmation that what you as the MSP are doing is productive, right? And you're, you're protecting them. Oh, absolutely. Um, what do you think is coming next? What do you think the next big threat is? Ooh, well, it's probably a bunch of little threats. Probably the real, I mean, <laughs> That's you know, I, I guess, you know, again, the, the over, over exploited term of AI, you know, I think is still way, underdeveloped of what I don't think we understand what that could be right I mean there are Agreed. some positives that we can see but but the the elements of you know just simplistically deep fake videos right and you know the mm -hmm. you know the voice somebody's you know our conversation here is probably enough for somebody to to you know program in our voices into you know some messaging that makes us you know look hard to hard to tell us that it's not real um so yep. I think I think AI into security, both from the attack surface and from the protection surface, um, is you know I think it's scratching the surface of of the 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 scare the scare tactics there right or not maybe not even tactics it's the fear elements the fear elements. Agreed. Did you see the AI that um, they essentially asked it to write ransomware? It said no, and they asked, well, could you write a program that would do this and then it would do this and then it would do this and then it would do this and it said sure yeah you would 
write this piece, and then you write this code, then you write this code, then you write this code, you combine it all together, and now you have ransomware. Um, so it's kind of the other side of it, which is, does it make it easier? Um, you know, for these criminals, like you said, the the deep fake. I mean, that that they had one recently where um, someone had called in using the voice and asked for a bank transfer. Um, and that's the very scary future. Uh, well, that was you know, that was working. one they had just the other day. She was an executive mm -hmm. right in a company or a cyber company or financial company, something. Right? She lost financial, yeah. Dollars. Yep. Um, that's it's going to become common if if, if if you know pieces aren't put in play. Um, even if it's just hey, I uh, you know I know you're my CEO Frank, but I have to send you a quick email. And just, you know, you, can you reply back from your email or I send you a text message or whatever it is. Um, yeah. You know, those, those things do happen. Well, and that, they and will again, it goes, back to the, it goes back to the, the MFA scenario, right? Of, mm -hmm. oh, it's a pain in the ass, but okay, if I have to do it. And it's like, no, you really do need to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, it's more of a pain in the ass. <laughs> Dealing with that after the fact. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You want to deal with the, uh, yeah, don't go there. <laughs> Yeah, the insurance company explained to them why you approved a <laughs> bank transfer. Um, yeah, so I mean, I feel like that that is definitely uh, an area that anytime you see a new industry pop up, right? Essentially, and that's really what AI is becoming, right? It's its own industry, and it's no different than when Bitcoin popped up ten years ago. Um, or I guess really kind of caught wind, uh, caught traction ten years ago. You watch something that was very unregulated. Uh, my wife and I actually just watched uh, BitCon, which if you have not watched on Netflix yet, it is oh. infuriating but great. Uh, <laughs> Not to check it out. About uh, essentially about a group of guys who were just kind of scam artists their whole lives, and they saw this industry and they said, "We could probably make money there." And they released an ICO um, on a coin that they made up. Uh, claiming to be the first debit card that you could just use as like a debit card and spend your Bitcoin. Um, and uh, essentially, yeah, the, the entire thing, I, I won't give it all away, but uh, very entertaining. Um, and, uh, but ripe for it, right? And, and that's really what they talked about. They were like, look, this industry was so unregulated. There's no SEC looking at it. The IRS wasn't looking at it. People were just making money hand over fist and everyone wanted to get rich and jump into it. So, is an opportunity. I mean, yeah. AI has the potential to be the same, and and that that is, you know, scary in a lot of yeah, ways. Beyond beyond scary, yeah, a lot of work to do. But, but uh, um, yeah, we'll keep it going. Oh, absolutely. No, I mean, it it is nice to watch our industry. I think is leaning into it well, and you're seeing some companies like Hats uh, pop up, and right others that are, are going to try and bring that to the MSP side, right? Because the reality is, for most businesses out there. You know, unless you're a major enterprise and you have your whole, you know, your team, um, and MSP is your line of defense. So it's good to see our side getting involved in it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, good. So uh, where are you going next? Uh, actually, I'm the next show in New Jersey next week for uh, one of our larger partners. They have some, they have an end user event, so we're going to kind of go and support them, and we'll be. Nice. Um, because say connect and coming up, I'll be at the CompTIA CCF communities okay. or communities and CCF. councils forum, yeah. Councils and communities forum. Yeah. Uh, that's in Chicago, and Matt's going to be at the um, CP Expo in Vegas that same week. Okay, um, just kind of floating around. So, yeah, we got got around it. And actually, I was I was kind of curious. I was going to give George a hard time because uh, we had a bet back in uh, October between uh, for the 49ers and uh, Eagles game. So oh, he no. me dinner, So I was going to chide him on the dinner. Uh, I, I haven't seen a reply of when he's going to buy me dinner, but we'll see him <laughs> at some point. Will you guys be at uh, Enable and Power? Uh, no, I don't think so. But then probably the next um, one will be... I'll be in Princeton, New Jersey next week. Maybe I'll see if he wants to come up. And... There you go. Uh, yeah, he, uh, no, he's in uh, Zero Trust World next week. Oh, okay. So down in Orlando, but um, yeah, I mean, I know we're 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 doing a good amount of international travel going up too. Um, so we've got the Pax Eight SKO over in Sydney and a couple other things. But um, I would say probably Pax Eight Beyond is your 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 good bet there. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. Plan ahead, yeah. he should be there. Yeah, 
All right. Is there anything else uh, we want to cover? You know, I would say, um, you know, I usually like to do a recap. So just obviously you got a lot of good points there, right? You talked about the four point, the four pillars of hygiene. Um, I really like that. I, you know, I, I do think that um, it's important for MSPs, right? Just to get out there and, and uh, you know, look at what they're doing, right? Are they checkboxing or are they actually continuously monitoring? Um, you know, it's, it's funny. I kind of see you guys as, you know, you got the house that you're preparing for the hurricane, right? The shutters, the boards, the sandbags, yeah. and you know, the pen test is the hurricane. Yeah. Um, yeah, really you know, it's look at it. <laughs> it's sorry, a, I, think, it, I think I might borrow that anal analogy. Thanks, thanks, Alec. <laughs> there you go. That'd be a great graphic for social. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I think, yeah, I, think I mean, that, it, I think that's that's those are good points, right? I mean, I, I, I think the you know, it. It's never too late to start, right? It's never too late to be a bit, a bit more proactive, um, you know, helping your customers and don't be afraid of the, the long list of things that you got to do or that, you know, the the tools, whether it's our tool or others are suggesting, um, but you, you know, you, you got to tackle them and, and, uh, and, you know, service your customer, right? That's what they're paying you for. Um, yeah. So do and the, one of the things you said that really stuck out to me was, you know, RMMs and all of them are, are phenomenal tools. And they're great for what they do, but there's a difference between what they're doing and what you're doing. And, and what you're doing is scanning the entire network for everything else, right? And, um, RMM is probably not going to pick up, you know, my Apple Watch that that I connected to the, to the internet. Um, you know, that maybe I've been real lazy with, you know, hitting OK at night to Apple and telling them that they can go ahead and update it. Um, you know, I think those things are just crucial. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, if I'm an MSP, you know, I'm hoping I'm uh, taking a second look at it. So the yeah. one thing I will, um, you know, I always uh, want to wrap up with, of course, is what is the best way for everyone to get a hold of you or your team? Um, and then, uh, yeah, we already covered where you're going to be. So definitely keep an eye out for yeah. uh, Frank and team. Yeah, so, easy, I mean, first starting point, just if you want to learn a little bit more, is just nodeware.com, N-O-D-E-W-A-R-E. Um, from there, you can um, actually we're relaunching our website tomorrow, so you can look today and look again tomorrow, and you'll see a little bit more more cleaner and better information there. But there's a there's a yes. specifically spot for MSPs to to you know raise their hand and say they want to reach out. Um, otherwise, you can um, contact me at f ramondi f r a i m o n d i at i g i u s dot com. It's the easiest to email, um, and um, yeah, find us at shows or. We'll be around or contact Alec and he can get you my information. So we have to no, we, but we, we appreciate the, uh, the opportunity here and, and hopefully, you know, part of the little bit of uh, educational wisdom to some MSPs and um, you know, whether you come with us or contact us or not, but at least start, you know, just continuing to add to your value to your customers. No, absolutely love it. And uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's an important conversation to have, so I'm happy we had it. And uh yeah. You know, look forward to seeing the response, you know, in the community about it. So if anyone needs anything else, reach out to Frank, uh, reach out to us. We'd be happy to put you in touch. Um, we'll make sure this goes out in the next webinar. Anybody who's watching this that wants to bring it back to their team, uh, we do record all these. So we'll make sure that this gets uploaded onto the MSPI website, YouTube, podcasts, et cetera. So uh, keep an eye out for that. And we'll be back on Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Frank. It was good talking Thank to you. Thanks, Jen.